Page 14, Golden Trumpets. Well, this looks kind of fun, I think. Let's get into it and find out. Now look it over, it's about a page and a half long. We're using treble and bass clef signs again. Now we have one sharp in the key signature, so this is in the key of G major. All the Fs are automatically going to be played as F sharps, wherever they are. And 4 4 time signature. So let's take it one hand at a time here and see what's going on. The right hand starts with little finger on D here. And I'm assuming you know the names of the notes in the music. I, have to go. I do all that stuff in the method book stuff. This is just playing music here. So here, we're in G position. One and two and. One and two and three and four and. And then a measure of rest and then quarter notes. You notice those notes in those two measures, the last two measures of the first line? All those notes? That's a broken G chord. It's just a G chord. You'll learn to recognize these chords in the music as you're playing them. Oh, it's just this broken chord or that, whatever. And it makes playing the music so much easier because then you recognize, you, you know what's coming. And the second line, quarter notes. last measure on page 14 is a C sharp. So since my fourth finger is on C, I'm going to use it on C sharp. I'm just going to come up long enough to play it. And then I come back down because the C sharp isn't part of the hand position. The F sharp would be, but there's no F in this position. So I'm only there long enough to play it. Let's go over to page 15, second line. We have eighth notes. One and two in. One and two in. And two and three. All these notes together, well, it's a broken G chord, is all that is. And then at the end of the line, you get block G chord. One. Just lowering the whole hand down. And then the third line, now the middle finger goes down. We have a B flat. You know, it's that chord. It's a G minor chord. I don't know if you've had those yet or not. All you're doing is changing the middle note. And at the end of the line, those are not B flats now, those are regular. Yeah. And then the last line, one and two and three. And then the last two measures. It's C sharp, one, two, three, and then a G and a B together. It's almost a G chord. We didn't have actually this is in it, but it's in the left hand. Because you have to consider both hands when you consider the chords. All the notes are there, it's just the hands are sharing them. Left hand. You're starting out with thumb here, and that puts you in this position. One and two and three and four and. And again, it's just a broken G chord. And then the second line is G and D together. One, two, three, four. Oh, this is fun. And here, and since second finger's on C, I'm going to use it on the C sharp. But I'm only there long enough to play it. And the hand position is here. And that, that, for the most part, is the left hand. So put the hands together. Well, in the beginning, that's the first two measures is one hand at a time. And then it's both hands together. They're playing the same note names. It's different fingers here. Okay. And then in the second line. One. Second line, second measure. The half note, two counts. The left hand has a quarter note, quarter rest. You're going to lift the left hand up. One, two, three, four. But that stays down. Rest. Red, and then you do it again. Page 15, second line. One in, two in. One in. tricky now because we got eighth notes in the middle of it. But this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rest. One. And then the third line, same rhythm, but now we got B flats. So once I put the heads together, then I go back over it however many times, and slowly work out the hesitations. So it's a steady beat.
nice and slow. Hmm? Then I'll think about the articulation. Staccatos and slurs, I'm hinging at the wrists short. connect the right hand the left hand short I'm on the key and I'm bouncing off boom boom right there second measure there a half note this is staccato it's done again the second measure in the second line wrist note again Page 15, second line. Again, just connect the right hand. Wrist. So put in the articulation, the staccatos and slurs and stuff. Then I think about the dynamics. F at the beginning is forte for loud. Here it there's no real melody, it's both hands. Here, whatever you think loud is. Okay. In the second line, you have an MF. That's mezzo forte or sort of loud. That's the melody of the right hand. These need to be soft. And then, that's melody, so now that's sort of loud. Then in page 15, second line, you're up to loud again. But now it's right hand. Left hand still soft. Now the left hand can come up. It's got mouth. And the right hand is soft on the chord because the melody is in the other hand. Then on the third line, now you're soft. Left hand is very soft. Loud. Soft. In the last line on page 15, there's no melody again, as both hands are loud. Then I think about the speed. Allegro is quick. It has to be accurate. So find the hardest part in the piece, and what can you do that accurately? It's probably the second line on page 15. How, how fast can you do that accurately? And that, you can't go no faster than that. Okay, that's, that's the way it is. my feeling and now I play it different every time I played it. So don't copy me. You you play it. You get into it. Remember the natural light sense? One, two, three, four. I mean in the second line on page 14 the left hand's playing on them. One, two, three, four. That's it. Yeah. Feel them. One, two, three. All the way through. Feel the natural accents. Now let's play this together very slowly. If you, assuming you can play it okay, no hesitations. I'm not going to do any louds and softs. I'll just I'll do the staccatos and stuff, but not the dynamics. I'll give us four counts. This is just checking notes and rhythms. One, two, ready and go. And one and two and three and four. Four, two, 
three, four.